the SCTC board, executives, and senior management must be held accountable for their gross mismanagement of taxpayer money and the gross misconduct that's been perpetrated by the toxic senior management team that has victimized countless employees. And the federal government must also be held accountable for its embarrassing lack of oversight that's allowed these problems to persist and its egregious cover-up of the truth that occurred this fall. At the beginning of this year, a comprehensive 345-page presentation was created and submitted to the Privy Council office at the request of the Office of the Auditor General of Canada, who we originally went to. This package contained documents that outlined gross mismanagement across every aspect of SDTC's operations and governance. It highlighted non-compliance with the SDTC Act and contribution agreement across all of the organization's funding streams and serious breaches of the conflict of interest policies by the executives and board. The package also included evidence of the toxic workplace culture that was created by CEO Leah Lawrence and her friend and still current VP Zoe Kolbuck, who've been allowed to continue abusing and harassing employees by a passive senior management team and board that protects and hides the abuse. All of this information underwent review by PCO and was then forwarded to ICED, who subsequently engaged RCGT to conduct an independent fact-finding exercise to validate this information. Here are the findings for everyone. The seed fund, ecosystem fund, and scale-up fund were all found to be ineligible due to multiple violations of the contribution agreement, significant deviations from the due diligence process, and conflict of interest breaches by board members and executives. This finding encompasses nearly 200 companies that all received over $80 million, all of which was improperly funded using taxpayer money. The two COVID payments in 2020 and 2021 were also given to the full portfolio of companies and totaled almost 40 million and were also deemed to be ineligible as the use of these funds was not effectively tracked. And several board members in that instance also violated conflict of interest by approving almost $4 million to themselves to over a dozen companies where they all hold significant ownership or executive positions. The report also revealed that SDTC lacked HR processes or policies and issues were never even reported to the board. And conveniently, the RCGT investigators couldn't even find a single record of any complaint ever being made in the history of the organization. This is a staggering level of incompetence, willful ignorance and corruption that has resulted in SDTC improperly distributing almost $150 million in taxpayer dollars just in the past few years and abusing dozens of people that have only tried to talk about the truth. The organization deserved to be suspended. The organization also deserved a new board executive and senior management team, but that never happened. Not a single one of the individuals responsible for these issues has faced a single consequence. No executive or board member was terminated or even given the slightest handcuffs. And every single person that was directly implicated even had their names redacted and protected by ISAD in the RCGT report. Even more shocking is the fact that despite these findings, ISAD continues to allow these individuals to manage taxpayer dollars and allows them to per continue perpetuating the abuse against employees who've been desperately seeking protection from their own government for over a year. That cannot stand. SDTC's board and executive continues to insist that the issues are just minor inconsistencies, while I said in the minister continue to claim that no findings warrant serious action. These are false narratives and I'm here to provide documented proof of all of the lies that continue to be perpetuated by both SDTC and ICED. I believe that my testimony can provide an in-depth overview of the key issues at SDTC because I worked on the financial due diligence and compliance of projects at SDTC for the key two-year period that coincides with the most serious findings in the RCG2 report. I am also intimately aware of exactly how I said understood the issues and the clear direction that the total bureaucracy had laid out. 
the minister and PCO have been aware of this file for more than they are telling to the public, and there are even documented evidence that they even engaged with everyone at ISED to make sure there were edits to the briefings before they were officially sent to them. All of this is backed up by documents, transcripts, and recordings, some of which we've already submitted to this committee. Thank you, and I welcome all your questions.